the Trailblazers and the Lakers in what is only best described as a star-studded series. For Portland, the big question is, who's going to defend LeBron? Trevor Ariza is not in the bubble. Ariza held LeBron to a, an effective field goal percentage of 27% in 51 half-court matchups this season. Now, for the Trailblazers, in the bubble, James has reported a 62% effective field goal percentage against them. This is in 2019 and 20, so for the entire season. The Lakers have to find a way to stop Damian Lillard. He's recorded the league's highest efficiency on, on pick actions. And then without Avery Bradley, Ali, uh, the Lakers are likely going to have to turn to our favorite, Bald Mamba, Alex Caruso, who's been successful defending on ball screens to take on that assignment. Let's bring in our Dave McMenamin, who joins us now from the bubble. Getting the one seed sort of generally means you're safe in the first round. It means you get to avoid playing the legs of Damian Lillard in the first round. He's leading this Blazers team that is 7-2 and two in the bubble. So what are the Lakers saying about defending him? Well, mentally, preparation-wise, Nicole LeBron said he's throwing out any idea of one versus eight out the window. Uh, he said he's not going to let his guard down going into this series because he recognizes the two-headed monster that the Blazers have in Dame Lillard and C.J. McCollum. LeBron said, yeah, obviously, you on defense, you always want to have two eyes on the ball, but all other eight eyes that we have on our defensive unit have to be looking at Dame and C.J. at all times because they can hurt you. Anthony Davis, when asked about Dame Lillard, said quite simply, he's balling, he's hot, we got to do whatever we can to stop him. Right, because they have eyes and so do we, and it'd be tough to not notice how good Damian Lillard's been playing lately. And again, this is just one of four games that we get today in the NBA. This one starts at 9 Eastern tonight. Thank you, sir. Tim Legler back with us on SportsCenter. Both the top seeds start their respective playoff runs today. You got the Lakers and you got the Bucks. Both have gone the legs just three and five in this bubble. So which team do you believe is more vulnerable this postseason? Well, I would say the Lakers, and for a couple of reasons. I think, I think first of all, they're going to get tested much more in a much more difficult manner right off the bat when you take on a Portland team. That's not a typical eight seed. We know that. They've got a top ten player. They've got a red-hot top ten player, Damian Lillard, coming into it. So right off the bat, they're going to be challenged, and they haven't really played a meaningful game since mid-March, and Portland's played basically nine straight playoff games since the day they got to Orlando. So that's going to be a challenge and then obviously you get past that now you get deeper into it and eventually we're looking at a matchup potentially with the clippers so you know that's a team that we all know can win a championship when you look at the bucks i think their path will be a little bit easier so i think the lakers are definitely more vulnerable um overall and certainly i think have an, an opportunity here to maybe fall into a little bit of a hole in their first round series just because of the stakes and because of what Portland has already gone through and their readiness as they get ready to play the Lakers. Okay, to that point, Legs, why don't we go from what they've gone through to what they could do now. Where specifically can Portland attack Los Angeles? Well, I think, look, the Lakers are a big team, and, I, and that's going to pay dividends against certain teams, and you want length when you play some of those bigger wings that they're going to have to play down the road, a Kawhi Leonard, a Paul George, maybe a Giannis, if you end up getting into the NBA Finals, even a guy like James Harden. But when you start talking about the smaller guards that have live handles that are really quick and elusive, and you put lineups out there with you know a center, a three forwards, and only one traditional guard to try to contain those guys, I think you could run into some problems. So that's where I think Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum can really have some effectiveness with all of those ball screens they're going to get. And you look at what the Lakers want to do, which is switch a lot of things. It's a lot harder with a guy like Lillard who's got that kind of range and McCollum even, who's so crafty with the basketball. So there's no doubt that Lillard and McCollum are going to hold the key to this entire series for Portland. And I just think the lineups that the Lakers put out there defensively, it could be hard to corral them. And again, you're getting them when they're already in rhythm coming into this series. So now the Portland's going to have their issues on the other end because of that size. But I mm. think defensively, I'm really interested to see what the Lakers can do to contain a guy like Damian Lillard when you don't have a Rajon Rondo, you don't have an Avery Bradley, two guards that normally you would have at your disposal to guard a guy like that. More than 37 a game for Lillard in these seeding games. That was best in the NBA. Meanwhile, BPI is still giving Los Angeles an 86% chance to win this thing. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.